Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, we shall look at some tips and tricks that may be useful when you try to build large projects in Scratch. Scratch, as you know, allows us to do animations, games, uh, you know, comics in a very nice fashion. But it turns out that when the projects become large, when you put a lot of things in a single project, sometimes things can tend to get a little bit you know, complicated. And it's in this context that these steps that I'm going to talk about in this video may be helpful. Now, clearly, this is not limited to the hackathon, but I see that a lot of students to, uh, plan to put fairly big projects for the hackathon. And hence, I thought this could be relevant uh, in context of a hackathon, right? Now, before getting started, let's let's you know define what we consider as a large project right now really there is no standard definition but this is just a general guideline that if your project has many sprites right so i mean just for the sake of a number let's say we have four or more sprites and several backdrops right so the point here is that you have several sprites which need to kind of work together and whose actions need to be coordinated right so four is just a number but this idea is that several sprites which need to be coordinated similarly say you have two or more levels maybe you have five levels or you have just two levels that's okay but if you have two or more levels and you have a project which puts together animations game stories all in one right now this is typically the kind of projects the students plan for a hackathon uh and for uh, you know uh, reasonably speaking those could be considered large projects right now the the common thread here is that this kind of projects will require a significant amount of planning code and coordination right so we have spoken about planning previously in a separate video uh, where i talk about getting a storyline in place uh, you know once you have a storyline then you start implementing right and that's where this thing comes in right so you need a code uh, which which has a lot of uh, you know a lot of things going on a lot of sprites several levels uh, maybe different things happening so you need to coordinate all of this nicely right so i'm going to give you four tips here uh, which i think will be useful uh, when you do a project to this sort right so let's look at what those tips are first thing first use broadcast right use broadcast and in fact use them quite effectively because broadcast is a very powerful feature in scratch it allows us to organize our code in a nice way right so uh, use them effectively number two name your variables very carefully right when you have lots of sprites lots of variables if you're not careful either you will find that sprites are interfering with each other i mean the variables are interfering with each other or the variable names are so confusing that you yourself will get confused on what's going on right similarly make use of this statements called the stop statements right? these are found in the control section so you know make use of them the reason is that as the code runs right so you it's always like you know something runs then it has to stop then something else has to happen and then something else has to happen right so it turns out that using stop statements judiciously can really help your uh, you know help you organize your thought and uh, you know organize your uh, code right and finally a simple uh, rule which most of the time simplifies things is that whenever you go to a new level just use a new sprite even though the character may be the same but you can use a new sprite with a similar costume or you know maybe the same costume even to uh, enact the new new role right so if you want let's say for example level one gets over you want to go to level two something else is expected stop level one go to level two with a new sprite it'll just simplify your life a lot yeah uh, let's look at this each of these in a little bit more detail so the first thing that i said was that use broadcast to organize code right now broadcast as you know uh, is a powerful scratch feature i'm putting a link in the video description where you can look at what broadcast is uh, you know it's from our one of our projects that we do in our course you can look at what broadcast is what are the main uses right really the three main uses of broadcast are that action on one sprite causes effect on another sprite multiple events result in the same action and finally to sequence events and i see students also use when backdrop switches for the purpose of sequencing right but the point here is that using broadcast you can really organize your code very very nicely right so for example in this case i've given three examples uh, you know maybe when you start the game you can have some kind of an animation or uh, set all the variables that you want to set right and then broadcast say start game this helps because you are making sure that the game is starting from a game or the project is starting from a known state so i've set everything correctly and then i have put a broadcast right for example similarly i want to set i want to go to level two once the score becomes more than 50 well i can again use a broadcast i say go to level two using a broadcast right now similarly maybe in the level two probably in some other sprite i can go say i want to go to level three if i touch color blue i mean depends on the game i broadcast at level three now what's going on here really is very interesting that you have 
through these broadcasts you are really creating a pipeline right so this happens then this happens then this happens and then this happens right and that creates a lot of clarity in your head but sometimes you will find that if you have lots and lots of broadcasts you start losing track of where they are coming from and where they are going right so for that purpose i'll give you a trick it's a little bit difficult but it's doable and the benefits are immense okay if you really do it it will help you what you can keep doing is to keep a table or say a map of broadcast that you're creating right and if you do it as you're developing the project it will be that much easier right otherwise it gets very hard so what you can do for example let's say in the in the you know example that i gave you previously uh, say we have three sprites cat mouse and apple so in every broadcast i can keep writing okay this broadcast says start game where does it come from it could be the cat sprite it could be some other sprite when do i get it well when the flag is clicked who all receives it and what happens when they receive it right and you will find that this looks very daunting in the beginning if you have a lot of sprites but as your project becomes large right you will see that uh, the entire project flow will be in front of your eyes when you do this and the best way to do this really is while you are doing the code right uh, so as you give a broadcast just add it to the table you can maintain a separate notebook or uh, you know somewhere you can maintain this thing right so uh, i think it'll really help you however if you think this is a little bit too much a simpler method and a little bit lesser onerous is to add comments right so whenever you give a broadcast for example in this you know i can go here and i can say broadcast level two i can say well received by so and so and uh, happens uh, you know maybe issued when score becomes more than 50 right now this code is very simple so it's kind of obvious but sometimes it's not so clear when you have lots of broadcasts what's going on right so this little bit of commenting will actually help you to organize your code right let's move on talking of variables now remember what are variables right uh, variables are basically boxes with which sprites use information right so sprites store information in them uh, they label we label these boxes and sprites can open these boxes to uh, access that information right so they are really boxes with labels now the challenge is that when you have lots and lots of boxes you have to be very careful which box contains what right so which is what i mean that name your variables carefully and meaningfully right so if you which means that if you are using let's say variables which are for all sprites make sure their names are different right so for example it could be cat counter mouse counter or maybe mouse speed cat speed right something like that right so make sure they are differently named so that you know what they mean and more importantly sprites do not interfere with each other right sometimes students will be a little bit careless and they just say make a variable let's say called temp uh, it turns out that five sprites have temp and then each of them is actually interfering with each other because remember a variable for all sprites is like a box which you share with your brothers and sisters and when you are sleeping somebody else might put something else in there right and this is uh, it really shows up and the project becomes large right now one of the things you can also do is to use variables for this sprite only right now this uh, is useful when the project has a lot of variables and uh, in fact sometimes if multiple people are working on this project uh, that also it helps it right? so everybody can keep a bunch of variables within themselves so those are boxes only for you only for this particular sprite and then there are a few boxes which they can share so it's like this is a good practice so if you can do this that's also great otherwise you know just it's okay if you use variables for all sprites but make sure they are named in a way that each box is uniquely identified both by the sprites as well as you right and, and for that purpose you can also try to you can consider making a table of variables too just like we did for the broadcast just to keep track right now moving forward so far i'm talking about moving i mean how does this code move from here to there what happens as the code moves but it's you know just like driving or just like cycling it's also important to learn how to stop in fact uh, many a times i find students falter uh, you know when it comes to stopping things there are situations when we have some code which is running for example in one level but when we want to move to the next level we want this code to stop right and this is why i i put this as a tip specifically because it's very powerful to use something like you know stop other scripts in this try the uh, other scripts in this sprite there's also a version which is called stop this script right so for example let's just take this code right uh, for example when the uh, when i receive start game i will have a situation where i am switching between two backdrops base basketball one and baseball one when i move to another level right which is saying this is level 3 maybe i want all this to stop because backdrop is common for everybody i can have all this getting stopped and i can switch to a new backdrop and then maybe i can give another broadcast from here right so this way i can make sure that something that is not needed actually stops right in fact this is very important you can also use this idea for example to play different music 
in different levels right uh, yeah there are in fact many many scenarios this thing comes up and hence uh, this is useful i am putting a link to a project called highway dash in uh, in this uh, from our course where we use this a lot to make sure that you know uh, things actually stop right in fact this becomes very important when you do when your sprites are cloning because we start cloning them we must stop the cloning when we go to a next level i mean if the game is such right so this is a very powerful tool right remember uh, in, in in like i said at the beginning Moving is important, but so is to know how to stop, whether it's cycling, whether it's driving, or whether it's coding, right? So, and I think this is where it helps. Uh, finally, a simple tip here, you know, I think goes a long way. Whenever you do new levels, right? So now this, you know, you may want to consider using a new set of sprites, right? So why do I say this? Because say sometimes what happens is that you're doing something with a sprite, right? Now, uh, after a certain point, maybe you want to do another thing with the sprite, right? So maybe, you know, the same sprite wants to do something else. But if you want to do it all in one sprite, it actually gets very, very hard, right? So the simple method here is that, you know, you say you have sprite 1, which is doing something. You can stop it when the level gets over. Create a new sprite, use a broadcast and start everything from this new sprite, right? Now, uh, this is particularly true when we are using cloning, right? So when you're using cloning, uh, you know, a lot of things are going on in the code. If you use cloning, it's really best when you, you know, when the level gets over, you can stop one set of cloning code, delete all the clones and start afresh using broadcast, right? Now, to make all this concrete, I'm putting two of our student projects in the description uh, where these ideas have really been used quite beautifully to organize code and to make some really fascinating projects, right? Uh, I just want to add a word of caution. I'm not going to talk too much over here. Uh, if you add cloning and broadcasting together, Please be careful because this is a potent combination. It can cause a mini explosion of clones. Uh, uh, we see this in the snake game uh, that we do in our class. I'm putting the video down. Uh, there's a way to solve it, but you know, be sure of what you're doing, right? So cloning broadcasting could be quite potent. I, I don't want you to kind of get confused there. Uh, but you know, to summarize, basically, you can use new sprites for new levels and you will find that it will generally simplify your life right so uh, in short you know we have taken four steps use broadcast name your variables carefully use stop statements and use new sprites for new levels i think these tips are quite useful based on my experience uh, you know one thing to remember always is that slow and steady wins the race and this is probably the most important tip that you know be systematic, be, uh, be slow, test your code at every process and of course most importantly and I say this always enjoy the process right so I hope you found this video useful I hope you will find these tips also useful I'll be happy to hear your thoughts your comments on this please leave your comments on the uh, in the comment section so that uh, maybe everybody can learn uh, from your experiences as well thank you very much take care bye bye